how to anchor in coral waters with all these coral hats around? Just listen to my interview with Kathy and Dan from the sailing yacht Lungta today and they will tell you everything about it. Welcome to Sailor's Life. Today I'm on Lungta, a one-off 25 meter and 64 ton ferro cement catch built in 1970. Dan bought her in 1999 and has sailed her together with Kathy, starting in Portland since 2008. They are a lovely couple and the boat is very special and very individual. By far the coolest story was meeting Kathy, without a doubt. <laughs> this life would be completely different. <laughs> yeah, Dan and I were both working at Xerox and that's, that's where we met. And, uh, we would have lunch together periodically, and it, it got to be more and more often. So we fell in love, um, and he lived on this big old boat and had this dream of traveling the world. And, and I have an adventurous streak in me. I, I was hooked. When we first left Portland, just the first part of our travels, we went up to Alaska for the, the summer. We, we took one month to get up there. We were there for one month, and we took one month to get back. Because although we're both warm weather people, Alaska was so close to Portland that we couldn't miss it. And it was a spectacular trip. But even though it was the middle of summer, July, it was cold. It was cold and some often rainy. And uh, so, yeah, we used this stove here to, to keep things warm. In Alaska, we saw glaciers and um, icebergs floating in the water right next to us. and and grizzly bears on shore and whales all over the place. We, we would catch salmon for dinner. Um, it's just, a, it was a spectacular place to visit. The plan was we'd spend one year in Mexico and one year in Central America and then head out for... for Polynesia. Yeah, Polynesia. So we ended up spending three years in Mexico. So when we were in Mexico, there were beautiful cruising grounds and we loved our time on the water but Mexico is such a big country and it's got differences from one part of the country to the other culturally and the food and the, the scenery so a few times we we found a place to leave the boat for a few days and we took inland excursions and that's when we went up to Michoacan and saw the monarch butterflies all gathering and we went to um, Copper Canyon, which is this huge canyon, taller than the, the Grand Canyon. And we took a train ride up to there and, and saw some of the local indigenous people. It was, it was pretty amazing. So tell me a little bit, uh, how, you, how do you finance oh, this yeah, lifestyle? Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, she well, should. Yeah. I, I was a software engineer, which is a, a well-paid job. We were met at Xerox. Um, and, and I have never been um, a flamboyant spender. I'm a good saver. Let me put it that way. I'm a good saver. And, and I was saving and saving for retirement when I would go traveling around the world. When I met Dan, there's, there's where my retirement is being, <laughs> being spent. So he retired from Xerox because he had just fit, hit retirement age and I wasn't old enough to officially retire, so I just quit. And we, um, we live off of our savings now. Uh, we can't, we probably couldn't have afforded to live off of the amount of money that I had saved at that point forever. But this lifestyle doesn't have to be an expensive one. You have such a big boat, and I guess the boat needs much more money than you do. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah. By far the biggest single expenditure goes to the boat. Probably two thirds of the money we spend is for our boat maintenance. Do you do a lot of fishing? Yeah, whenever we're traveling, there's always a couple of lines out. Um, as soon as we pull out of the reef, we'll set, set a couple of poles. But we haven't been catching as much in the last couple of years as we used to in Mexico. We were quite sure of catching uh, Dorado almost every time we went out in Mexico. And nowadays, I don't think we've caught a fish in uh, a, a year. year. Yeah. What about fishing within the reef? No, we, we avoid fishing inside the reef. There's too much possibility of ciguatera and, and nerve toxin. 
Well, this is something that you don't see it all around the world, but here in French Polynesia, they have um, pearl farms, and the pearl farms are supported with these, these floats. Uh, and we find these floats washed up on the beach from time to time. And cruisers around here have found a way to make use of it, which is really important. Our anchor chain um, can get stuck wrapped around the coral heads, which doesn't make for a, a secure, a safe anchoring. And um, also it makes a lot of noise. And so um, if you use, if you attach these floats to the anchor, the chain at some various points along the way, then the chain will be floating up above those bombings and they won't get snagged and, and created a hazard. Now, power. Well, uh, we've got 10 solar panels installed, a uh, total of about 2,500 watts um, solar. In practice, we end up pulling in about half of the theoretical capacity. And it's just enough with our big freezer. Um, in the winter, it's not quite enough, even here in Polynesia. In the summer, it's, it's way more than enough. And then we he gets to joking about we're, we're running our blender on solar power, so it's a solar blender, and we've got a solar washing machine and a solar sewing machine. People suggest setting up a, a solar oven to cook your bread, but all of our power at this point is coming from solar. So, solar however, microwave. we cook the bread, yeah, we've got a solar bread maker. So, you told me that you like to take people with you sailing. So, how do you choose these people? Who do you take? Their friends, family, or? Or people who are traveling just hop on board for generally a few days. Although we've had people stay with us for months that we met from couch surfing. Um, and they've become quite good friends over we've, time. We've had a, a couple paddle up to the boat on a, a SUP, a, a stand up paddle board, and say, hey, we're looking for a boat to travel on, and they stay with us for a while. Um, we, we met some guys in an um, internet cafe that had been kicked off their boat and they were going to stay in a campground because they didn't know what to do and so we invited them aboard for a few nights. Is that a kind of a share expense uh, thing or how do you do that? Generally we ask people to kick in. Um, we've been asking people, we, we figure $600 a month is, $20 a day. Yeah, covers our exp their expenses looks like you live a very happy life here on the boat. Would Doesn't you choose? Suck. Would you choose this lifestyle again? Oh, in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No question about it. Um, there are times when the boat becomes an anchor. And so we're thinking about moving on to a different lifestyle. But it's been an incredible decade. There's no way I would have traded this for something else. This, this is really the experience of a lifetime. Yeah. I'd recommend it to anybody who feels inspired to do it. It's not for everybody, but it's for a lot of us. Wonderful life. Subscribe my channel Sailor's Life if you want to follow more facts, experiences and stories. Give me a thumb up and press the bell if you don't want to miss any of these interviews.